Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gradhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare This is um, studying the um, Chaitanya Shikshamrita written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And this is chapter 7, part 2. And it is entitled Worship as Ras. <clears throat> Those who worship the Lord should consider the nature of their worship. Is it material or is it spiritual? What kind of activity is it? Though some people take shelter of material concepts in their worship, it is better than gross material pursuit. But how can that be? Their thoughts cannot go beyond the material realm. If thought is considered worship, then worship must be nothing imaginary concepts, nothing but imaginary concepts bred of materialism. If worship is neither material nor mental, then what is it? In normal human existence, there is nothing except matter and mind. If that is so, then a person must become an atheist or an impersonalist. The state in direct opposition to matter and material thought is the indistinguishable state, nivishesha. On taking shelter of that and accepting brahmavad with no ras at all, a person will next take shelter of pure atheism. Let there be no worship. for That for which all souls are so eager has become false or a flower in the sky. How unfortunate. Rejecting the states of matter, material mind, and their opposite, nirvishesha, please search out the real platform of existence for the soul. These concepts must be rejected because they've captured the soul and covered up his real identity. If these are not pierced, how can a person become free from them? If you have three blinkers in your eyes, which obstruct your vision, then in order to see, you should pierce them. The pure existence of the soul is like the eye. It's covered by matter, material thought, and their negation. Remove these and the eye will be normal. When the soul's real eye is revealed, there will be no more worship of matter, worship of mental products of worship, or negative thought processes, there'll only be spiritual worship. The spiritual worship is called Ras. Those who worship are actually cultivating Ras. Factually, however, the persons qualified for Ras are rare, and therefore it's considered a secret topic. There are two types of worshipers those with knowledge of Ras and those without knowledge of Ras. Those without knowledge of Ras also experience a slight degree of Ras. Being ignorant of the truth, they call it meditation, concentration, absorption, trance, prayer, or worship. When the person becomes absorbed in prayer or worship, like lightning, an experience rises from inner soul, shakes the mind, affects the outer body. He realizes that if he could remain in that state constantly, there'd be no more suffering. What is that state? Is it material, mental, something opposite of material? Searching the whole universe, nothing can be com found to compare to this experience. It cannot be counted among the subtle side effects of material energy, such as electricity or magnetism. 
Examining the mind it cannot be found there either. In the negation of material thought as well, there's nothing comparable. From where has this experience come? Examining carefully, it may be found that it is coming from the pure existence of the soul, which is presently covered by matter. When engaged in the act of worship, this state is experienced, but it is not analyzed in detail. Let us examine it more closely. The indescribable state is a particular quality or function. The function must have a subject or ashraya. The pure soul, which is covered by the material body and material mind, is the shelter of that function. On realizing that the soul is small and dependent on a higher power, this fu function suddenly reveals itself like the flame that appears on striking a match. The thing to which the function moves is its only object, Vishaya. By proximity to the object through the process of worship, the function can emerge from the ashraya, the soul, and flow toward the object, Vishaya. This function is the stai vibhava. The practitioner is the ashraya and God is the Vishaya. The qualities of God are the stimuli, Udipana. When the function is combined with the subject and the object, immediately anubhav or external symptoms appear in the subject. One or more of the 13 anubhavs will certainly appear in the person. Some of the 31 vicharibhavs will also assist in the external manifestation of the experience. Some persons will also experience some of the sattvika bhavs. Now consider, what is worship? After analyzing all the parts of worship, it may be understood that worship is nothing but ras. Worship is attainment of a state of experience stemming from a basic state of consciousness assisted by vibhavas, Anubhavas, Sattviga Bhavas, and Vyabhachari Bhavas. So worship is Ras. Material action, material thought, and Nirvishesha anti-material thought are not worship. These are all without Ras. All groups of worshippers depend on the actions of Ras, but being ignorant of the process of Ras, we cannot be made to understand Ras in a scientific way. This is due to the influence of previous bad association. Worship as Ras is of three forms. Restricted, slightly revealed, or fully revealed. Some people experiencing Ras in a restricted way cannot feel it after leaving the activity of worship. The reason is they're enjoying material Ras. As no one can live without Ras, the lives of these people are full of material ras. Spiritual ras is a temporary thing, like flash of lightning in their life. By association of devotees and guru, this condition becomes elevated and gradually begins to open slightly, but by lack of good association and teachings from atheists and impersonalists, the worship becomes gradually more restricted, extremely restricted, and then almost lost. This is very unfortunate for the soul. In the slightly open state, Ras penetrates into the life of the person. The person gravitates toward places where he can hear topics of Ras. He is indifferent to atheists and impersonalists. In the fully open state, Ras is fully realized. Being realized, it acts continuously. In the open state, Ras is revealed in the forms of Santa, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhura. But those qualified for Sakya, Vatsalya, and Madhura Ras are very few. Only by great fortune can the soul develop a taste for them. And that is part two. So it was a short section, so we go on to part three. And this is entitled 
Santaras. The object of worship is not indistinguishable, Nirvishesha, but rather personal, Savivesha. Conviction in this fact is called Sama. When a person who has Sama develops Rati, that Rati is called Santarati. The asraya of Santarati is the soul who has attained such peace. The visaya for that Rati is a personal God. Such a person is free from any material conception of God. His worship takes the form of yoga practice aiming at the joy of pure consciousness. Giving up desire for enjoyment of the material world, he's situated in personal bliss. The object of his rati, visaya, is Krishna in the form of paramatma or a slightly personalized realization of Brahman. He has no attraction for meditation on absolute nirvishesha Brahman. For him, Brahman is somewhat personalized, but at the same time, he does not have a complete conviction in the eternal personalized nature of God. Thus, sometimes he realized a forearm form, sometimes a majestic form of Krishna, and sometimes Paramatma. The sages such as Sanaka, Sanatana, Sananda, and Sanakumar are examples of Shantarash Bhaktas, Santarati Bhaktas. All these devotees do not have conviction in the Lord's eternal forms. They do not have possessiveness toward Krishna. Possessiveness is a mood necessarily attached to the personal form. Therefore, the rati of the Santa Bhaktas, due to its absence of relation, remains in a pure state. The Visaya is the Lord endowed with a form of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. The goal of the Atma Ramas, Paramatma, Parambrahma, bestower of goals, the merciful, and the great. The Asraya is the Atma Ram, seeker of spiritual bliss or performer of austerities. The Stai Bhav is Rati towards the giver of liberation, Makunda, who's beyond the material modes, beyond the senses, self revealing, and full of knowledge. The stimuli, Udipana, are hearing the principal Upanishads, living in special places, inner revelations, meditation on philosophical truth, influence of knowledge, seeing the universal form, association with knowledgeable devotees, and discussion of the meaning of Brahma Sutras and Upanishads with like-minded persons. The Anubhavs, or general symptoms are of this realization, are looking at the tip of the nose, acting like an avaduta, keeping the eyes focused eight feet in front while walking, showing the jnana mudra, holding the thumb and forefingers together, lack of hatred towards those inimical to God, general respect to devotees, great respect for destruction of material attachment, and attainment of liberation, indifference, purity, egolessness, and practicing vows of silence. All the sattvika bhavas, such as hair standing on end, are present except fainting. However, these sattvika bhavas manifest in a dim condition since the person is devoid of bodily identity. Occasionally, the symptoms become glowing but never reach the condition of bright or dazzling. Sometimes, the sanchari bhavas, such as patience, fortitude, joy, thoughtfulness, and remembrance, manifest in santaras. Because it has such particulars, Santaras is counted among the rasas. However, in the description of the spiritual ras of Raja Lila, Santaras does not appear because it does not have a particular form of the Lord as its object. Therefore, it lacks the intensity of possessiveness. 
By great fortune, the soul can attain possessiveness of the form of the Lord. When this occurs, Sudarati grows into Prem, and Prita Bhakti Ras Das yeah, appears. Another short section, so we go on to part four. And this is Prita Bhakti Ras. Prita Bhakti Ras is called Dasya Ras by many. This Ras, however, is of two types. With a mood of some Brahma and a mood of Gaurava. Some Brahma Prita Ras is called Dasya Ras. Gaurava Prita Ras is called Gaurava Prita Bhakti Ras, not Dasya Ras. Worship devoid of some Brahma or reverence is not commonly discussed. Thus it is by good fortune of the soul that he attains rati for Krishna without reverence, that is, with familiarity. Sakyaras, pity, vatsalyaras, or intense desire, madhuryaras. These are all mentioned in the scriptures, but the devotees do not concern themselves with scripture as their nature is their scripture. Though it is not the case that all persons who have attained rati ignore scripture, the subjects of ras that are being explained for the general devotees to and guide them on the correct path are supplied only up to some brahma rati. To go much beyond that is not in accordance with the aim of this book. In Prita Bhakti Ras, the personality of God is accepted. He has two forms majestic and sweet. Speaking analytically, the sweet form can only be Krishna. In the form of Krishna, all majesty is included, but by the prevalence of sweetness, madhurya, the majestic aspect is almost lost. As the case arises, it may sometimes manifest in a non-contradictory way. To consider this in more detail, the reader should consult Jiva Goswami Satsandarbha's and Sri Krishna Sanhita. It can be nothing as sweet as a relationship with Krishna. Therefore, the subject here will be Dasya in relationship to Krishna of Raj. When Dasya to Krishna arises, the person thinks himself to be favored by Krishna. There is a love of Krishna dominated by respect and understanding oneself as the servant. The object of the Dasya Ras is the supreme form of Krishna who is holding within his pores the universes, who is the ocean of mercy, the Lord endowed with inconceivable energies, who is worshipped by all perfections, who is the seed of all avatars, who attracts the hearts of the Atmaramas, who is the Lord of Lords, the most worshipful, the most determined, the most forgiving, the protector of those surrendered to him, the most grateful, the embodiment of truth, the controller of karma, the most powerful, the pure, the just, the friend of the devotee, the generous, the most influential, possessing all strength, the most glorified, most grateful, and controlled by love. The asrayas or subjects are Atikritas, Ashrita, Parisad, and Anubas. These four types of servants are the asraya of Ras. They are qualified souls. Brahma, Shiva, and Indra, who by the Lord's mercy have been given certain powers, are the Adikrita Dasas. Ashrita Dasas are of three types, Saranya, Janikara and Sevanishta. Kaliya, Jarasandha, and the imprisoned kings are of the first category. Shanaka and the other rishis, when they give up the desire for liberation, are of the second type. Those who are naturally inclined to worship the Lord, such as Hariha, Bahulasva, Vishvaku, Shrutadev, Pundarik, Pundarika, are of the third category. The Parashards, who sometimes personally serve the Lord, are devotees such as 
Uddhava, Dharaka, Nanda, Upananda, and Bhadraka. Anugadasas, who always served the Lord personally, are of two types. Purasta, situated in the city, and Vrajasta, situated in Vraj. Sachanda, Mandana, Stamba, Sutamba are Purasta, Anugadasas. Raktaka, Patrika, Patri, Madhukanta, Madhuvrata, Rasala, Suvilasa, Premakanda, Maranda, Asanda, Chandrahasa, Payoda, Bakula, Rasada, and Sarada are Vrajasta Anugadasas. All these servants are humble minded, thinking themselves as objects of the Lord's mercy. They are ready to carry out his orders, are faithful, and recognize the Lord as master. Some are Duryaras, some are Diridas, some are Duryadas, some are Diridas, and some are Viridas. Among the four types, the Ashrita, Parisads, and Anugas may be either Nichisiddha, eternal associates, or Siddha, perfected souls, situated in the spiritual world, or sadhaka, perfected but in this world. The usual stimuli for this ras are the sound of Krishna's flute, the sound of his horn, glancing at the devotees while smiling, hearing Krishna's qualities, his lotus, his footprints, new clouds, the fragrance of his body. Special stimuli are the mercy of Krishna and the talsi on his feet, and the food remnants and foot water of Krishna. These are the vibhavas. Besides the 13 anubhavas previously mentioned, there are a few more symptoms visible in the das bhaktas. Always obeying the Lord's orders thoroughly, friendship with other servants of Krishna, absence of even a drop of envy in serving the Lord, and being fixed in servitude to the Lord. In Dasyaras, the eight sattvika bhavas, such as being stunned, also appear. The sanchari bhavas of joy, pride, remembrance, dismay, meekness, worry, anxiety, thoughtfulness, enthusiasm, fickleness, argumentativeness, disturbance, bashfulness, inertness, illusion, madness, concealment, attentiveness, dreaming, fatigue, sickness, and death are visible. In this rush, because of the awareness of the Lord as Master, there is reverence coupled with an anxiety of how to perform the service properly. This is called Sambrama. This mood, combining with Prema, becomes the Stayibhava for this Ras. This Stayibhava arises gradually through the previously discussed methods of practice by the Ashrita Das. For the Parasads and Anugadasas, this Rati is stimulated by previous impressions. These remembrances are awakened by hearing about or seeing the Lord. In Dasyuras, Prema, Sneha, and Raga are also seen. The Rasas are progressively superior, attractive, and amazing. If the Sadhaga has greed, then he develops qualification for these Rasas. Whatever Ras the devotee develops an attraction for during practice becomes his eternal Ras. Bhakti, which possesses Ras, is called Ragatmika Bhakti. Raganuga Bhakti, which was dealt with while describing Sadhana Bhakti, follows after this Ragatmika Bhakti. The Raganuga Bhakta imitates the behavior and qualities of the perfected devotees in these rasas. The devotee imitates whichever ras he accepts as his life and considers supreme. 
he will attain that form of life when he reaches perfection. This is the limit of Sambrahma Priti. Thinking of the Lord as superior due to family relationship is called Gaurava. Gaurava Priti is love based on understanding of the Lord as one's father. As this has been discussed in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, nothing more need be said here. So I think we'll stop there.